Hey everybody, it's Savage Lands News coming in today with a extra special episode. We have a guest from all the way around the world, 10 hours ahead of me in time. We're talking in the future. This is the current net Finnish national champion, Ilamari, who, you know, believe it or not, just wiped the floor of the event on Reinar, right? Our green boy has a national championship under his belt. Congratulations. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> How you doing? Thank today, you. Amari? Thank you. Uh, very, very good. I have a uh, day off tomorrow. I have uh, my work week done. Nice. Uh, I'm all jacked up on doing this interview with you. Uh, <laughs> this is like uh, the first th- time I'm being interviewed to any kind of media, at least on the any kinds of like card game related stuff. Yeah, wow. So pretty pumped on this. And I have a feeling it's going to be the first of many, right? You, uh... Yeah. <laughs> You you're kind of relatively new to the flesh and blood game, right? Yeah. Um yeah. you you said you joined, I believe, you know, about a year ago, was it? The last Pro yeah. Quest season is when you jumped into the game. So, yeah, yeah, at least in the tournament uh, level. Yeah. So what made you what made you want to jump into flesh and blood in general? Yeah. So uh I have played many uh, board games in my life and uh I have always uh, loved more comp competitive side yeah. of gaming. Mm. I have played a couple of card games uh, in my youth. Like the first one was this, I think it was Duel Masters or something like that. And I have also played a couple of these living card games from mm. uh, Fantasy Flight games. One of which was called Warhammer Invasion and the second one, which was called Android Netrunner. Yeah, it was. Oh, yeah. Android Netrunner is a good game, but uh, 20, 2016 came and uh, Museum of History was in meta and uh, <laughs> I really do not did not want to play that game anymore. So <laughs> I did have a hiatus of uh, seven years or something like that. When I first started to get this eats of competitive gaming and I uh, really did not feel uh, like playing Magic the Gathering, uh, even mm. though I like some elements of it, I really do not like the overall mana resource yeah. mechanic. Yeah. I much more prefer the flesh and blood side uh, mechanics. And I, I, I think I the overall feeling and the setting of flesh and blood also. Yeah, totally also agree. There, uh, what were you going to say? Uh, I was going to say that Reinhardt was my first hero. I, hmm. I think I fell in love with uh, uh, Intimidate as mechanic. Yeah. I think it is uh, very cool uh, as an ev- evasion mechanic. Of course, I understand that it has this, how I would uh, say, it has problems. And I understand that it is not not so much funny when you're in the receiving end of uh, three Intimidates and levels yeah. on stack. I like the hero. I like many other heroes as well. I was I was thinking about taking uh, either Dromai or Bravo to mm. game to the nationals but then i last week in work was pretty horrendous and uh, i well i was not so sure that i could play uh well enough in that in in those heroes uh, in drama especially and uh, yeah. since i do not know my way around uh, uh bravo mirrors uh, especially in finland where we have uh, very good uh, bravo players i just went with the green man that i know well i can play it relatively tight and i can play it all day and uh, one thing i must say that i have learned that is uh, very important in tournament gaming is that you do not play too hard deck uh, like yeah for me i know how to play dromai but the deck is very complicated and a shout out for the our greatest flesh and blood player like ever the Juha Sarnilampi who is a uh, well-known player uh, in Big Track and Dromai just watching uh, the man play that deck is uh, it just uh, feels awesome he just knows like every little every little nuance of the game and when we met in the finals um, well it was great to play with him but uh, at that point i was very happy that i had picked reiner yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so so you said you you played a couple other competitive card games there for okay. a little bit of time. You jumped into Flesh and Blood. Uh, you picked Reinar, right? Was your your kind of go to hero? And for Nationals, yeah. you were kind of looking at Bravo, Reinar, and Dromai, which is yeah, pretty funny. Those are often the three heroes that I'm looking at playing. Granted, I've never brought Bravo to an event before. It's always been Dromai or Reinar or Viserai. But what about those those heroes like what about Reinar is it really the intimidate mechanic that you really love or is it kind of you know his his straightforward game plan of like you know block and and do damage yeah. block do damage right yeah yeah those those two also yeah i i i have played some i think 2 300 games in the uh, talisar mm -hmm. with uh, with Reinar or at least something like that and uh, i'm pretty used to good and bad lines of that yeah. hero and uh, i know when it is time to roll scabs i know there is i would not say that it is oversimplified hero yeah. uh it is not the most complicated as yeah. uh, as drama for example uh you have your you have your blood rush bellows and when you see your blood rush bellows you are you're trying to play them you're not trying to beat them uh but then uh, at my deck at least there is uh, some tier limp from limp combo that you are going to set up and that is also i have fell in love with that card uh it has spiked me many games out of nowhere and uh that gives the i think it is the card to give you the last push when you need it uh for example if you're against uh, bravo uh, which i feel like is a favorite game for reiner and uh do not do so well in your first or first two blood rush bellows you only get to do a uh, little damage and uh, bravo player uh, recognizes the situation and tries to fatigue you uh, you have always the, you can always like set up uh, a big uh, thirling from limp a turn mm. uh, to boost those last damages and uh, that kind of nuances is uh, something that i much like in the hero yeah i think I think Reinar is more complicated than a lot of people think, but he's not like he's not the same as the other heroes where, you know, if you make one tiny little mistake, then the rest of the game you crumble, right? Like, you know, it's not not the same depth as like Kano where you're counting cards mm -hmm, and pitch stacking mm -hmm. for ten turns to try and do one massive combo. It's not like Dromai where you're you're really trying to build this tempo board state and if one thing goes wrong, everything goes wrong. But but yeah, he has to play the multiple outs. And he's the mm -hmm. probably the biggest the highest variance hero next to Levia, obviously. I think Reinar and and Brutes in general yeah. are very high variance. So when variance goes wrong, you have to find a new plan, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That is that, that is one thing I I want to add on. So uh, I have talked and think about this many times, and uh, the one thing that I I find that I do not like so much in some other heroes, like uh, in the in the ninja class, is mm -hmm. that uh, the var variance they have is the variance of cards and the deck, yeah. uh, how you draw on your first cycle, for example. And uh, of course, Katsu has this his uh, hero power that yeah. can mitigate the uh, variance and uh, offer uh, added power level by that way we on the other hand our uh, cards are not so much well they are not on par with the other cards like uh, their values are not so high yeah uh, aside from a couple of cards like swing big blood or spellows yeah. uh, and a couple of other cards but uh, i have found that i like the var variance sorry i you must uh, excuse my bad spelling. Uh, <laughs> okay. I yeah, uh, I like the dice when it comes to generating randomness. Uh, mm, yeah, uh, opposed to the deck that generates the yeah. uh, randomness, and that that's why I I have many uh, times uh, thought about uh, starting to play 
ninja, but uh, uh, then again, I, uh, I'm not a fan of that feeling when the deck just uh, gives you the outs. And uh, that is the same kind of feeling uh, when playing uh, Bravo, and you can, yeah. th there is this state of um, those those games when the deck just handles you three relevant uh, crippling crushes and gives them with uh, three blue cards to dominate uh, yeah. and you just uh, win because uh, your deck just gave you the win basically yeah uh, that is something that i feel like i do not like so much than throwing dice but uh, <laughs> i and I can see why other people do not like uh, that feeling when you are against Reiner and he throws on average like five for the whole game. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think I mean I think it goes both ways. When I whenever I try to play another hero, right, like like Bravo, I was trying to I was trying to see if I could figure out Bravo for a while because it's kind of close to what Reiner is doing, right? You're sending big damage, you know, big turns. Like here's a six, here's an eight, here's a ten, right? Um, but I noticed it's kind of the same thing. It's like when the deck worked perfectly, it was amazing. It was like I was unstoppable, mm -hmm. just cripple and crash, spinal crush, cripple, crash, star strikes, you know, and you're just going. But then when something went wrong, I felt like I didn't have the same agency I have on Reinar. Yeah. Because Reinar can just kind of fix wrong, you know? Mm -hmm. If you get a blue, if you get an all blue hand, you can like block nine, two, you know, scab skin, claw, claw with tunic, right? You can You can still do six damage with one card. Or, like, you can dig yourself out of a losing game with scab skin sometimes. Like, you can just kind of try and find that, like, end game plan. So, I agree. I think it's, I think Reinar's unique, you know, probably next to Levi. Levi and Reinar are unique. Scab skins does give you a different way to play the game when things are going mm -hmm. wrong and, and correctly. But then you have a good game. <laughs> my first game at Nationals where I rolled three ones in a row and my <laughs> pulping oh. discarded Blood Rush on turn one. <laughs> oh. and then you're like huh yeah <laughs> today this game is not for me <laughs> scab skins mm -hmm. has not been kind to me today um, yeah so yeah you know it's just a different kind of variance mm -hmm. reinar's mm -hmm. cards are all pretty much the same except for blood mm -hmm. rush you know yeah the only card variance you can really get is like if all three blood rushes are at the bottom yeah it happens sometimes but yeah okay so now that you've won a national championship what are your next goals in competitive flesh and blood? Oh, uh, I think uh, I, I really like uh, this whole week has been so quick that I have not even thought about <laughs> it. I hope that the coming coming set, uh, the bright light set, gives the the, the mechanologist uh, so much power that it uh, makes uh, Reiner uh, relevant in the Me meta game be because cool. uh, I think that uh, we have excellent tools to combat what uh, mechanologist as a class does. Yeah. Uh, we have the arcs mass, and uh, then again, I think we are a rather good. Uh, uh, hero to play erase phase uh, which is yeah. one of my favorite uh, generic sixes in the old game maybe uh, after command and conquer yep. um, yeah uh, other than that i have thought about it and uh, i do not think that i have too much time to test uh, to the worlds uh, mm. and uh, i am thinking that i'm Whatever I'm going to do at the Worlds, I'm going to have fun. Uh, I do not think that I uh, I am expecting myself to do so well. I am, well, I think I am rather fine limited player, oh. uh, more so than constructed player. At the, the skirmish season, mm -hmm. yeah, the skirmish season uh, was uh, two draft. Uh, two monarch drafts and uh, i managed it to won them uh oh. all i like the uh, way uh flesh and blood uh limited and draft feels like i know mm. it is not uh i know that there is people that do not like it so much i think i like it more because i see it more as a as a, a board game of mm, sort yeah. uh more than uh look uh, because i'm i'm not a a uh, former magic player and i i do not have that kind uh of 
I'm not going to compare the flesh and blood uh, draft experience <laughs> yeah. to any any kind of magic draft experience. Uh, I know that uh, the draft in magic uh, can uh, feel better, and I, yeah. yeah, of course. Uh, but uh, I I like the way it, uh, limited feels in flesh and blood. At least uh, it is for my my taste. But uh, other than that, I I am going to the worlds like with no expectations, yeah. and uh, I hope to uh, I hope that I am able to play Reiner at uh, Barcelona. But I have not made the decision yet. I'm uh, looking at the bright lights, the coming set, and deciding on that if I uh, if I want to go with Reiner or or Bravo or Romai. I am also going to gather up some Levaya cards uh, mm. and uh, I'm thinking about uh, uh, giving her a little go, uh, yeah. maybe taking uh, her to the Barcelona. Well, if you go to Barcelona, I'll see you there because I'm going to uh -huh. be there. Yeah, so nice. we, can, we can get a beer together. Um, yeah, yeah, I also have I have Levaya sleeved up in my deck right now too, actually, nice. to be honest. Because uh, Brute, kind of similar game plan. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited to see uh i'm excited to see where you go i'll invite you into uh i have a secret area in my discord nice with all of the reinar players uh who strategize for the next upcoming event so i'll add you in there and we uh okay. we'll Thank all you. post our list for worlds hello you <laughs> hello it's my fiance hi i'm hi. Eating him pumpkin spice lattes <laughs> okay this is ilmari from finland hi nice oh from yeah. finland that's so awesome nice yeah. to meet you this is, um... <laughs> nice to meet you the ladies, the ladies love this drink, and I got Nathan to like it, so we use it. It's a pumpkin spice latte. Nice meeting you. Sorry about that. Okay, bye. <laughs> I'll leave some of that in, maybe. Final question I have for you. What are you most excited about for the future of Flesh and Blood? For the future of Flesh and Blood, uh, spoilers for the Tolarian Community College uh, set. Uh, I do not uh, know if it is called like uh, Tolarian Community College X LSS or something yeah, like that. Yeah, something but like that. the news dropped uh, last day, mm -hmm. and uh, it seems uh, it seems just like what uh, Flesh and Blood needs right now. It okay. uh, uh, it, it is a uh, standalone game set uh, to like uh, uh, to give to your uh, friends and make them play the. Uh, game and uh, I, I uh, read in the article that uh, there is also going to be new uh, new IRA welcome decks and that sounds very very great uh, yeah. and in my local community we do not have had uh, any any new players for a few months uh, we are a small community and uh, I am a I'm an armory player first and foremost. Uh, yeah. I like to go to armories every week and see my friends there. Like uh, for me, playing Flesh and Blood is uh, is all about playing it in the paper. And yeah. uh, I uh, the game is good, of course. And I I play I play Talisar a little bit too much, if I am honest with you. But uh, the thing I, yeah. I like the most is uh, in in person play and in person play in my hometown. So okay. that is that feels just awesome that uh, there is uh, going to be this a new product for uh, targeted to new players uh, yeah. and growing communities. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think the two things that I'm looking the most forward to would be like getting UPF to work. Right. In a yeah. way that makes sense. And I think, you know, some of the cards they spoiled where you can interact with everybody at the table, you can kind of like politic a little bit more. You can defend mm -hmm. everybody like each. If you go to the website, you guys at home, go take a look at the cards. They're very like full interactive with the table because my biggest yeah. gripe with it was always like I could only really interact with the people to my right and left. Mm -hmm. And so if, if if the person sitting across from me is, you know, winning, there's nothing I can really do about it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so I really like that it's kind of like they're adding that flavor, more mm. table interaction, more bartering, more trading, more like politicking. And I think also the the single player format that they've been talking about for like the last two yeah. years. Um, from what I've heard from people talking yeah. to LSS and, and, and that, it, it might be awesome, right? Yeah, yeah, for that sure. That will be yeah. so cool. Yeah, and I, I think it is... 
it can be the commander of this game and uh yeah and i like i like so much that they are not making another another commander other than UPF of course is the, their yeah. uh, multiplayer format but they are uh, making sure that they have this awesome product that is casual play casual play only for now and mm-hmm. uh, i i am so excited about what it can give to this uh, game i am yeah. so excited what it can give to the lore of this game mm-hmm. i may i'm uh, waiting uh, those like adventures that they can show us uh, and what they can do for lore that uh, they really could not do with these uh, one versus one yeah. Uh, sets. Yeah, I think the one verse one is why I fell in love with it. I yeah, you know, course. like I loved fighting games. Yeah. Every every game I ever played was always kind of one v one, right? I just loved the yeah. aspect yeah. of me versus an opponent. Mm-hmm. 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 But to bring my friends in. It's not it's not so easy for me to be like, all right, play this yeah. card game against me. And then, you know, I know every single rule and every single thing. And it's like, yeah, you know, exactly. I try my best to be as nice as I possibly can. But it's not a very it's not as easy to get somebody in. than if I say, like, OK, mm-hmm. you guys, all four of us come over to my house. Let's let's crack this thing mm-hmm. open and let's see what happens. You know, like, you know, I, I think that'll be more fun. OK, it will be. Uh, anything. Oh, and then correction. It's not a single player format they're building. Sorry, I, I said single player. Uh, it is a PVE, multiple yeah, person yeah. PVE format. So you and your friends sit at a table and you do some sort of interaction with like a pre-scripted event of some kind. So I heard it's going to be awesome. But are you ready to jump into your deck list and talk about yep. uh, a Reinar? Because I'm ready. Yep. I love talking about Reinar. Let's do this. Let's do it. Okay. All right, everybody. We have his deck list right in front of us on the screen. I will link it in the description below. He was kind enough to give us pretty like 80, 90 percent of the matchups correct here. He 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 did say he made some changes last minute and didn't go through the entire matchup section, but it gets you like 80, 90 percent of the way there. So you have full side list or sideboard guide. And we've done, I don't know. 30 to 50. <laughs> I don't even know how many deck lists on deck checks on right on this channel at this point. So we're going to mix it up a little bit. And I think we're just going to talk about like your strategies with some of these pieces of equipment and then any particular things that I notice are a little bit more like unique. So as far as equipment goes, right, you have the pretty standard set. I would say you made the decision to go gambler's gloves over uh, skull crushers, right? So what's your what's your opinion on skull crushers versus gambler gloves? The skull crushers uh, surely do have place uh, on yeah. decks uh, other than mine. To to uh, but it bluntly, I have played with it. I just uh, I could not stand the feeling of throwing dice uh, without gambler gloves. So unfortunately, the go into school crushers is no go for me i feel identical i've been experimenting with renner a lot recently because uh i just i just haven't had that much time to play competitively so instead of like really pushing the kind of same deck that i've always been pushing i've really been trying different things like really weird things like i i, I was testing a list the other day with like 30 yeah. blues in it um oh. yeah i'm trying like the fatigue briar but with reinar um and it's kind of working but less blues anyways um, and then I tried Skull Crushers for Lexi, and then I was trying like, uh, you know, all sevens. So a lot of interesting things. The only, you know, Gambler's Gloves constantly, I just feel so naked without them. Mm. Anytime I try, because like, I had an idea thanks to uh, Jose Lau in, in uh, well, Singapore, I think, but I'm messing that country up. <laughs> uh, thanks to Jose Lau, he was like, well, if you just block nine and roll Skull Crushers every other you know every other turn against lexi you can do eight damage mm-hmm. and i was like that's interesting off of blue you know I, like with tunic every three turns you can just but then i was trying that you know i'd get eight damage every once in a while and then i just roll a one and my gu- my gloves would explode and my turn would end <laughs> and i would mm. cry yeah <laughs> i just can't yeah do it. i just can't yeah. do it okay so you're on you know typical claws list i would say so mm-hmm. gambler's gloves you did choose fendal spring tunic and Barkbone, which I find interesting, over Heart and Crossstrap. Yeah. yeah. What's the what's going on with Barkbone here? Yeah, I, I think it is a really good point to start here. Uh, so the Barkbone, if you can uh, show us, uh, it has two things going uh, for it. Uh, 
in favor of the heart and cross trap. trap. Yes, yes. It has a uh, battle worn one. Yes. And is ha it has the uh, instant gain resources. And what do you need to know about uh, the Finnish meta is that uh, we have a couple of seriously good Kano's. Oh, and uh, yeah. uh, that's something that, uh, well, I did not have enough room uh, for a second Aussie's respite. And uh, I thought to myself that uh, I I really do need uh, some kind of insurance to combat Kanos if I see them. Uh, okay. uh, well, lo and behold, my <laughs> first uh, round uh, opponent was uh, was this Kano player. Unfortunately, I drew uh, bad hands and uh, did a couple of mistakes uh, at that game, and uh, unfortunately, I lost. Uh, mm. that round uh, but the uh, bark prone strap uh, strapping was able to make me float for a another turn because what it makes is that Kano player does not know uh, when we have another blue in our hand because mm. we do not know uh, 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 we do not know either uh, if we have enough resources uh, to cover arcane barrier or not uh, so uh, what it does is that uh, they have to uh, guess blindly when they go in for the killing uh, combo turn with wildfire. Yeah, it is for that. And also the uh, added bonus of uh, Battle Warn 1 is that uh, when you are against Fi, uh, I have learned that the, uh, one block can, it can on some points shut off a a really crucial uh, Phoenix mask flame. Or yes, Phoenix flame, okay. uh, yeah, yeah, Phoenix flame that can uh, trigger mask, or it can, if they are on the mask of bouncing links. Mm. I have learned that you want to control how many uh, hits they have with their attack action cards. Yeah. yeah, so that is one thing going for it. Of course, it is not so powerful uh, when we are in the uh, mirror for uh, ex uh, for example uh, I do not know I think I I play the Oasis Respite uh, not Oasis Respite uh, the Findal's Spring Tunic, tunic. Th yeah the Tunic uh, when I'm uh, mirror against another Reiner there is a one thing that I have uh, thought about e that if I'm going the second I'm putting on the uh, strapping Barbaran strapping and not the uh, Fendal, uh, but it's something I have to uh, test uh, much more. Yeah. But I think uh, uh, that's the that's what I have to say about strapping. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. This because it's an instant, you can basically layer it onto the Kano's kill turn. You can gain extra yeah. resources at instant speed, which can save you a lot of the time. It makes a lot of sense. And then it mm -hmm. looks like you're on a you're on like a tr a true kind of Reinar switch deck here, right? You've got your full suite of mm -hmm. equipment at the top, and then you're carrying a lot of equipment in your sideboard. So you have, yeah. you know, Romping Club, Beaten Trackers, yeah. you have both helmets, or all three helmets. Um, yeah. So you're switching between Club and Claws. Um, I guess yeah. to start this off, uh, when do you pick Claws and when do you pick Club? Uh, I think uh, I big club against uh, Lexi and uh, Katsu. And uh, before uh, Dust Till Dawn, which gave us the Warmonger, Warmonger's yep. Diplomacy, yep. which made the Azalea uh, to plummet on the metagame, yeah. uh, I thought that the uh, Romping Club was uh, crucial against, uh, against hers also. Okay. But then again, we do have the Scowling Flashback that can really a hamper uh, Azalea's big turns, and uh, now I do not really know if the uh, claws are better in that matchup. Uh, it, it, uh, but it is something that I have not played on paper for many, many months, okay. and I do not know if I have uh, played any Azalea's uh, for a couple months in Talisar either. Yeah, yeah, Warmongers really hurt her mm -hmm. future. <laughs> What do you think of scowling flesh bag so far in your testing? Oh, I I I love it so mm -hmm. much. Like That's there so is good. there is all the things I like. Uh, it is a 
it gives you armor, it gives you intimidate, it is a well of endless your mama jokes. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's just, uh, there is, uh, to get back to the point, uh, it is the weapon, it is the equ equipment we needed to combat the aggro matchups yeah. uh, against Fi, against uh, aggro decks that do not have Voltaire, it is great. I have tested it against Lexi, but I have found that they can uh, dump their hand on either either Voltaire or then they can dump it on, I think it is Giver of Rustling Leaves. Is, yeah. And they, they just uh, missed the Intimidate trigger there. But yeah. against every other aggro deck, it is it is just gold. Yeah. I think I have it on the uh, matchup list uh, that I put it on Viserai also. I have I am not sure if it is still okay against uh, Rune Blades because they have their the Bellbound script uh, creepers that can yeah yeah they can like uh, uh, throw the remaining remaining non-attack from hand with uh, using the creepers and so you do not uh, get the value off of the skull and flesh back but uh, yeah. it is something that i really do really have not tested enough yet i like it i like it into viscerai even though they yeah. can creepers it out you can either kind of force a creepers interaction that they didn't mm -hmm. want to use right uh that is true. or you can or you can catch them when they don't have enough resources floating right like Mm -hmm. They go for that super wide turn. They're going to end on like Revel, you know, Revel and uh, Rosetta. And then you just, you can stuff mm -hmm. a Revel sometimes, which is worth like a million health, right? I really mm -hmm. like this card. Uh, I actually just started running only this card. You know, the okay. only heroes was like, it was like Lexi, Bravo, and mm -hmm. there's one more hero that I, oh, and Dromai, that I mm -hmm. like Crown of Providence in. But mm -hmm. I, I, I feel I feel like it's good enough that I cut a yeah. whole sideboard spot out. But yeah, it's a fun card. It's a good card. And it measures your skill because you have to yeah. really know what your opponents have in their hands, right? Yeah, sure. Sure. It's a fun card. I, I like this kind of design space. It's high skill on both sides, right? Like you have yeah. your yeah. your opponent can navigate around this helmet if they try mm -hmm. really hard, mm -hmm. and then you have to be paying attention, right? You know, I like yeah. that design. Okay. So let's jump into the the main board. So you have 48 cards main board. 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15. So you have like the picture perfect standard amount of yellows that we are, yeah. we all come to know. And it's all of the it's all of the three cost ones. The only real interesting one here is Pack Call over like reincarnate. But I imagine yeah. you're running Pack Call because Yeah. <laughs> okay. So 15 yellows, 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 blues, 16, 17, 18 blues. Okay. So Pretty standard amount of blues here, but you are running three Reckless Swings main board. Yeah. How do you feel three Reckless Swings after the event? Uh, I think this is uh, pretty good. Uh, okay. I was able to uh, kill uh, Bravo uh, at <laughs> top four with a double uh, Reckless Swing. Nice. Uh, block four is kind of relevant, as well as that it is blue card. Yeah. I have found that I want many times i want to play reckless wing very aggressively early on when i'm against uh, like lexi if i'm like uh, having a uh, not so good hand that is all these pulpings and wild rats that do not block i can throw a reckless wing and get the value off of denying their own hit and getting damage through and basically blocking uh, blocking well with a non-blocker okay yeah I'm, i sometimes i wish i had a third one mm -hmm. and then sometimes i don't even like having two <laughs> it's kind of like a hard you know in the wrong in the wrong scenario this card is a dead card right but mm -hmm. but i've won probably i, I want to say like honestly 30 percent of my games with this card you know what i mean like it just wins Me games too. right mm -hmm. how was how was hold the line for you uh well, uh, I think it is more flexible than it may seem like on the first glance. It is very good if you can hit three of a kind or Blood Spell or Art of War turns. They, they do come, um, not so often, of course. And when they do come, it is the value just comes through the roof. But uh, I have found that... Uh, 
it is it is a it is a blue card that you can jam into the arsenal so it is not so bad if you yeah. just get two value off of it reiner has uh, have had many kind of uh, obnoxious cards especially the blue cards that uh, would jam your uh, arsenal if you have to leave them there yeah. and uh, to get a little back to your last point about cutting uh, Crown of Providence of your list, I think Hold the Line is, is also good in that if you do not have the Crown of Providence and mm. the added insurance of just how I would say the opponent is uh, coming like with a common uh, common and conquer and you have like three blue defense reactions. Oh. I have that come uh, at the at the yeah 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 i have that uh interaction come to me at the top four match against the bravo mm. and of course i was able to throw a six off of uh, uh scab skin leathers the next uh, round so it was not so bad but uh, i i really feel when you say that you feel that uh, two reckless wings is sometimes too much and sometimes two hold the lines uh, is too much i try mm. to put cycling your uh, arsenal off of course there is some uh, situations where especially against um, what is called the ice lexi against that it is just obnoxious it, it can start your start her turn with uh, giving you a one frostbite and that very much just sh- uh, shuts the hold the line off yeah, it makes it a two yeah. card block too yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, is, that is not so good value that is not so good no. okay yeah i was interested because like you said our blues are so bad on average mm-hmm. you know it's like they're very specific they don't do very much a lot of the time unless it's like to win a game but yeah yeah i was interested because it it, it would be nice to stop a, a lexi five breakpoint with one card but then the rest of the game it doesn't do anything until they draw right so it's like it's like a proactive card and in, in, or you know it's like a reactive card but then you have to have it at the right time and i don't know uh, so I've been I've been fifty fifty on it, but a lot of people say it's good. A lot of people say it's miss. So it's it's hard to tell. Mm. And then you run tear limb from limb, and you already yeah. kind of talked about how much you like this card. Give me a yeah. I'm a I'm a tear limb from limb not believer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of I can people, see I can see why. Yeah, uh, a lot of people in the Discord tell me I'm wrong. So tell me why yeah. I'm wrong. Tear limb from limb sure needs how I would say it needs to be set up basically every time you are going to play that i have like uh you either need a an opt from either a uh, pack call or from the uh, fate for scene mm. uh, to make sure that you are not going to miss that uh, card the random discard or uh then you need uh then need to just know that the uh, card is pitched so that uh, you will always straight row of uh, sixes be, uh, below the tier limb from limb. And uh, I think needs support, but uh, I think the support comes from rather good cards. Uh, I have also three enlightened strikes somewhere uh, lying re- uh, around here. And uh, I, I really have came to love the enlightened strike in Reinar especially it is it is just so good when you throw scabs with it yeah. i had this uh, one hand of i think it was i think it was something like a two enlightened strikes and two sixes they were like uh, yellow sixes or something like that i it was a swiss game against Viserai and uh, uh, he came to me with a non-relevant attack and I kept four card hand and okay I was going to roll the scabs because I know that uh, every other result other than double ones is just good because if it is under four I can play the enlightened strikes for go again if it is four or more i can just play those cards and draw cards when it is uh one card fives and it also sets sets up the tier limb from limb and sometimes when it is uh, aligned to your ra- uh, random roll of six from your scabs it is just it's just <laughs> it just wins yeah. you the games yeah 
Yeah, one card five is my favorite mode. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. All of them it are is. good though, but it's my yeah. favorite mode. Because mm -hmm. uh, when I was playing with Enlightened Strike, I think during uh, Pro Tour, it was like the first time I'd really brought it out. And it also, one thing Reinar really does struggle with, honestly, at the end of the game is killing your opponent at their like last five health, three health, two health, whatever, right? Yeah. You can get in this like weird, super long, grindy trade where you, you send six, you block six, you send six, and you and your mm -hmm. opponent are kind of doing the same thing forever. And you're just hoping that eventually you find your swing big or your intimidate or whatever. And Light and Strike is like the only card that can safely extend your turn without using scab skins mm -hmm. at the end of the mm -hmm. game. Yeah. Because you can send five and then send eight. And that's gonna that'll probably wipe out the le the rest of their health. Whereas like scab skins, especially during the end when you probably don't have gambler's gloves anymore, can mm -hmm. just lose you the game straight up. Yeah. And even like pulping sometimes, like if you just get unlucky, there's a lot of blues left. It's very deep, mm -hmm. and you play your pulping and it whiffs. You're just like, okay, cool. I think I lost. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I like this card a lot. Yeah. Um, but but you said this card is reliable. But you have to set it up. You can't just blindly yeah. play this. Yeah. You, you, yeah. You're, you're opting, you're looking, you're you're setting it up. What's the most common line for you with Tear Limb from Limb? Is it swing big? Uh, swing big, but uh, I think I think also the backhand uh, red is quite good because it comes 12 and it is basically doing two intimidates. Of course, it at least three card hand if you, uh, if you are aligning hand with... Uh, tunic online yeah mm -hmm. yeah if you can play it off tunic it is a three card hand uh, sometimes it is more of course sometimes you align uh, it with another blue card if you get lucky and uh, you get to throw a couple one or two claws uh, with go, go again and uh, it, it gives you this late mid late game burst of damage that they oh, okay. uh, maybe uh, do not maybe they do not see it coming when you have uh, used your last uh, blood or spell low and they think that they are pretty safe and it can give you the tempo to finish off the game yeah that makes sense it's like another closure right yeah closer yeah. card okay i mean i get it uh, i like the idea of like, i like the three card 12 that's nice three card 12 yeah. three card 16 is really good mm-hmm mm -hmm. And then you have your standard reds, I would say. Yeah. Command Conquer is good. Pack Hunt's good. Closes games. Savage Feast, just like mini yeah. Blood Rush if you roll right. Yeah. And then Swing Big cards, nuts. Yeah. It, yeah. What do you think of, uh, you know, these reds are, uh, did any of them perform overly well or underly well? Or are they just like, they're just good? They are, they are just good. I have some runner player have com complained that Cool Crack should have been a blue sorry sorry uh yellow yellow, yellow three cost uh, i i don't like that i i can see the argument but i i really think it would have been too much like uh, i can understand uh when james white and lss uh, have been saying that they are reluctant to give a uh, brute another blue six i can see why it is so because uh uh, if you gave brute too much, uh, if you give too much sixes, especially blue sixes, then it you can rely pretty heavily on wild rides and pull yeah. things to do work when it it uh, when you need to go off. Yeah, yeah. I I like that. Uh, uh, it is it just so so much gas when you hit a school crack off of. Uh, <laughs> I don't think uh, like uh, like. Blood or spell or mm. like anything like that school uh the the pull pings. It it just sometimes wins you the game off of yeah. nowhere. And um well that card's gas. I like it. Yeah, I like it too. I hated it at first. I thought it was a little underwhelming, but then yeah. the amount of times where you just needed one more resource for your turn mm -hmm. and it just gives it to you is is nice. And then it defaults into a good arsenal target, right? Um, mm -hmm. if, if you didn't discard it, you don't mind putting a two cost in your arsenal. It's fine. Yeah. Um, cause it's, it's going to come out for six. It's going to come out for eight on a blood rush, which is fine. Yeah. Uh, I do wish, I really don't like the idea of this being a yellow though. I personally mm. don't like three costs yellows. I don't yeah. like them. I think they feel really bad. Yeah, um, they are. Yeah. If we could get away from three cro cost yellows, aside mm -hmm. from like beast within, I feel like Reinhardt would be yeah. way better. Yeah, of course. Of course. 
course. Of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> okay. And then we got your sideboard here. Yeah. All right. So you have quite quite an interesting selection of cards here. You kind of answered mm. some of the questions I had, but why don't you take us through it? Uh, you have two alpha rampages. Yeah. What is that for? It is against Bravo, and uh, sometimes uh, I, I think it is uh, it combos uh, pretty well with the uh, tier limb from limb. Also, it it gives you an out uh, late game to close off the games. Yeah. Like if they do not have their arsenal up, you are uh, always punching three or more through their uh, defenses. Just just love that. I have played with uh, Savage Speed down, but okay. uh, I have felt it's a little bit too clunky. I tried to, to uh, yeah, uh, I, I I have tried the trade in combo, mm. uh, which is on paper it uh, feels kind of good, but uh, I have it just takes the place of uh, Enlightened Strike on the list, and uh, Enlightened Strike is just so much better than the mm. than the trade-in, and I have not really found any ways other than that to make Savage Beatdown to work, so Alpha Rampage uh, is a role player, and its role is to like punch the last three damage through the through the enemy or then again it can be played as first turn it punches at least three damage through their uh, yeah. hand at the first turn and then you just uh, get to arsenal a card it's just yeah. i like makes it. sense makes sense yeah. it's a good card when it when it's good it's pretty bad most mm -hmm. of the time but when it's good it's amazing <laughs> you know <laughs> wins games amnesia I'm, I'm guessing you just wanted to have some insurance for katsu yeah yeah some player have used the uh, uh, red cadaveros contraband against mm. some of the uh, more aggro matchups yeah. and i have played also with it my my thinking about these generic sixes is that to put them to your list uh, their on hits need to be massive yeah. uh, amnesia can shut off katsu turns it can also shut off the spirit of airina uh, lumina combo uh, if oh, you're against Voltun. can test some use cases against uh, Fi, for example they cannot target a phoenix flame on their graveyard uh, and uh, turns off rune gate for vincent yeah, yeah, also that, also, yeah, <laughs> yes. And uh, also, if you're against somebody that you know that is playing this Empress Draw My version, you can take this to your list and uh, try to play it because it shuts off Flame Call Awakening, I think it is called combo, because oh, yeah, they yeah, yeah. cannot uh, search for a, another Phoenix Flame from their mm, deck. Yeah. yeah, it's just a good, it's a good card. And it blocks three, yeah. which is different than most yeah. of them, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we talked about E-Strike a lot. Card is yeah. cracked. It's good. Mm -hmm. All three modes yeah. are good. It helps a lot. A race face we talked about a little bit, but is it yeah. dash, this Yeah, ride? mainly dash. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, yeah, dash and viserai, basically. Uh, I have dabbled on putting it to the uh, Uslander, Icelander. mainly because uh, it shuts off the... It shuts off fusing? Yes, uh, fusing and uh, channel like frigid. Yeah. So you you cannot uh, keep it up on another turn if it hits but many times against uh use lander it just feels kind of clunky yeah uh, and then that and that is i just really like the card against das so mm -hmm. i have been reluctant to uh take it off of my lists i feel the same way all of my sideboards are always like these one of two of cards that i just they do so much value mm -hmm that i don't want to live without them you know what i mean yeah 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 and then you chose fate for scenes over sink blows that was one of my first yes. questions but you kind of explained it you like to opt for your yeah sense. i like the opt yeah. yeah yeah we we need to know what is uh at the top of our decks more than we need to uh cycle our hand of course there is situations that you would 
need uh, to cycle your hand. But uh, then again, our list is brim full of those uh, defense reactions and uh, you have to cut somewhere. And yeah. I think the fate foreseen is more crucial to our game plan than the sink, sink below is. I agree. Yeah. yeah, you're running a lot of cards that discard and draw, right? So mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. you need that protection. And then yeah. you talked about Oasis, you have scary Kanos. Yeah. I'm assuming that's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, I bring that to the Bravo matchup yeah. just to be extra, extra sure. Extra I want safe. to kill. Yeah, yeah. There is uh, many great uh, Bravo players, and I just do not feel like leaving home without a without my respites. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> makes sense. All right, and then the two big cheetah cards here. You're running yeah. Pulping yeah. and Wild Ride. So you want to uh, give me your your take on these two cards? Oh, I just I just love them. They are my they're uh, on point with my playstyle. I just love that cheetah cheetah style play. Okay. I do not think I have really played any other styles of Reinar, and they are just uh, giving you what uh, you really need, uh, which is another uh accent point and you are given basically a free random discard effect that you do not have to give give another card from your hand so that uh, of course the randomness sometimes comes to you yeah. i have lost some games to the fact that none of my random discards of a pool pings or, or wild rides worked and uh, sometimes Sometimes you do Reiner stuff, and I, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's all I can say about it. Yeah, yeah. They're they're good when they're good, and they they're sad when they don't work. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. pretty much pretty it. Yeah. Okay. Any closing thoughts about the list? Uh, any cards uh, that maybe you would change, or yeah. any cards that uh, are performed? Yeah, I think uh, you missed the energy potion there. Oh, I yeah. would like to say that uh, uh, one thing that I was thinking about bringing two uh, energy potions and putting the third e, uh, enlightened strike, but I really did not think that there were so many uh, wizards around the nationals, and it was really the last card that I uh, change it in the uh, basically last evening. I cut off another energy potion to make my uh, aggro matchups uh, more favorable by adding another another enlightened strike. And mm -hmm. then I go and half of my constructed games were, were against wizard. So what can you do? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what yeah. Can you do? That is the, that is the I gem mean, one... lottery. You said half of, yeah. you know, a decent amount of your matches were against Viserai, yeah. and you still walked away the, the winner? Sorry, sorry. Uh, Wizards, Wizards, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I played uh, two Kano matches and one Uselander matches. Yeah, sorry. Okay, yeah. Wizards, uh, got it. I thought you said yeah, Viserai, yeah. and I was like, you won yeah, against yeah. that many <laughs> Viserai? Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, for the kids, kids around the... Uh, home listening to my uh, somewhat exotic uh, accent, I, <laughs> I must tell you that uh, the Finnish language is spoken much more differently than the uh, English language. And uh, it's, yeah, I mean, it is something great, man. I wouldn't, oh, I mean, you're, thank you. you're better than anybody out there who does. I don't speak two languages, so congratulations. <laughs> okay, thank you. I have thank no you. room. Yeah, yeah. Epots are nice to have mm. against wizards. They're nice to have. I don't know if you need mm -hmm. them. They're nice. I like to have them. You feel real way safer when you have one or two of these down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you feel way safer. So at the end of the day, did any? Would you cut any cards from this list after playing? Yeah, I I do not really know. Uh, if I would expect more like stable meta, like uh -huh. on the worlds, I could have could have changed it, the bark bones trapping to a hardened cross trap as okay. we uh, talked. The points that I made uh, about the uh, uh, block value and the uh, gain to resources, uh, oh, sorry, gain resources instant, but uh, they come uh, 
uh, randomly. It is Hardened Crosstrap is of course uh, better, uh, at least in these kinds of uh, list when you are running like Alpha Rampages uh, alongside uh, the Tier Limp from Limp, and it combos quite nicely uh, with uh, the with the effect of Hardened Crosstrap. Then again, I I do not know if I would have done something else. I do feel that the list is kind of solid as okay. my lists come. I really feel the uh, I like the feel of the uh, how the list functions. Yeah. Uh, one of the cards that I just have put into the list is the E strike, uh, which we did talk up much about. Uh, it replaced the red origin beat down, uh, which was my oh, yeah. go-to card for many reasons. It is basically the I I love intimidates, and uh, what I love more than intimidates is another intimidate. Uh, <laughs> add it on top of another intimidate. Uh, it is a way to close the game, but uh, of course the Enlightened Strike is more flexible and it is not uh, so vulnerable to the uh, Warmonger's diplomacy. If you uh, yeah. you can always because you cannot uh, throw scabs when you are uh, under yeah. the war of diplomacy, and I do not think you are never never uh, putting yourself to the peace when you are played another uh, diplomacy. So if you find yourself, uh, well, basically, uh, if they do not ban the Warmonger's diplomacy of I do not see putting uh, Baritzin uh, beat down reds to my decks uh, anywhere near in the future. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I took my latest list, I took red barragings out because I, mm. I swore by them before because I thought they were nuts because to me, they were like two. They were two purpose cards. It, mm-hmm. You know, you could send barraging in a claw for a two card seven, and aggro decks not that long ago would always eat the seven. They would always yeah. take it. But I feel like we've shifted a little bit where they don't mind blocking the seven and then mm-hmm. doing more damage. I'd rather just send seven so they at least take one. Yeah. Uh, it, it just it feels weird. Like I even and then with Oldham leaving, I cut Alpha Rampages all the way out, and then I think I added one back in. Just because I like to have that one card there just in case it goes too long. But yeah, I agree. I I think barragings are not as strong as they were like six months ago. Yeah. It's kind of weird, but all these aggro, like even Fi, the new Kadachi Fi, he blocks it. He never used to block it. Mm -hmm. So it's Mm kind of weird. Uh, People's mindset has shifted a lot. So I think the power of that card kind of went away. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I really like this list. It's, it's, uh, it's like a nice balance of everything. You've got club, you've got claws, you've mm-hmm. got cheetah package, you've got turtle package. It's like it's a very well-rounded list. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I think mean, it is uh, as close as mid-range as they do come in this game. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like split pretty much down the middle, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, mean, I really like it. And I, I watched a little bit of your games on the, the yeah. YouTube channel, which I'll link in the description below for anybody at home who wants to take a, a, a look at him piloting the deck. Um yeah, it's it really it's good fun. You did you did really well. Congratulations once again, Thank you. Thank you. national champion. You're a national champion mm-hmm. now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I do not know if I can still believe that fact. It's crazy. Uh, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm happy for you. I hope I see you at Barcelona. Uh, yeah. Do you have any closing statements or anything you want to mention before we take off? Uh I want to uh, thank my local. Guys, I do not think I have so much of a team with which I have uh, like trained or something like that. But I uh, have my good friend Hendrik, with uh, whom I trained for a couple uh, weekends uh, prior to the nationals. Also, I want to thank uh, Jesse Lilliama to drop out of the <laughs> nationals and uh, give me his uh, seat at the table. Uh, Finnish nationals were open in white and uh, due to the personal reasons, I was not able to attend the... I was not online when the invitations opened and uh, I was at the 
a wait list for it and then Jesse did not feel like going to the tournament and he kindly dropped. Also, I want to shout out for my fellow Brutes uh, <laughs> enjoyer, Oli Saarinen. Uh, and I think uh, Oli, Oli won, not one, not one, but top 80 to call in Antwerpen, Reiner. And uh, I think this list shares many similarities uh, mm. with the uh, list Oli run, but this is more, more to my taste. Yeah. Uh, and there is many things that I think Oli would not put into his list, but yeah, we have a lot I, of Reinhardt players coming out of your region now. We got you and Oli on the chat yeah. back to back already. So yeah, 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 that's awesome. All right, everybody, yeah. it has been my pleasure to have the, the national champion Reinhardt player on the channel. Right? This, I think I think that is the highest tournament won by a Reinhardt so far. I think it is. I think so. I'm not. I have to double check that, but I believe nationals is the highest tier event Reinar has ever won. So, congratulations! Incredible Thank work. You. Thank you for coming on the channel. I know the time difference is kind of difficult, and <laughs> you know we're 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 always happy to spend <laughs> the evening it. talking about our green man, our green man. And then yep. I have a spoiler card coming. You'll you're gonna want to check it out. So uh, September sixth. September Tune in. 6th. Spoiler card coming on the channel on September 6th at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard mm -hmm. Time. So I'll put the video nice. up, everybody. Uh, it's going to be hype. So, yeah. Thanks for coming on once again. I appreciate you have you, you here. I'll invite you to the Discord. We have a little area. We talk about Reinar all the time. We'll, be, we'll probably be doing it for Worlds. So, uh, yeah. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Thank you. Have uh, a good night. <laughs> yep. <laughs>